Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the halfling fighter. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the human barbarian. I'm Ashley, and I play Aklep the Druid, a former member of the Burning Mammoth. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, Aklep, Corgo, and Zankath continue to explore the cave complex, along with Rungara the Smilodon and Grifka the Fire Elemental. After deciding to leave some large rabbit otter creatures alone, they ventured into the large eastern passageway of the cave. They found a recently killed Smilodon, and heard the whimpering of its offspring and the munching sounds of some kind of monster. Continuing around the corner, they encountered a horrifying creature that had killed two adult Smilodons and was eating them. Presumably, it would eat their cubs next. The party leaped into action, but found that the skinless, horn-covered humanoid creature was tough, and even more so after it leaped into a Smilodon corpse, using it as a sort of armor. Now, Rangara is confused for one more round, and is attacking random targets. Grifka the Fire Elemental is at exactly zero hit points, and Zankath has only one hit point. It's looking bad for the heroes. Now it's Korgo's turn. Corgo, Prangara is between you and the monster, and Zankath is on the other side of the monster. What do you want to do? Corgo is going to see if he knows anything about this. There's like a trick. Okay. Maybe he's got to just yank this guy right out of the dead Smilodon, Smilodon corpse. Don't know. So you could make a religion check? You don't have any kind of specific lore, right? Nature. Yeah, nature won't work. This needs to be a religion check. And if you aren't good at religion, then uh, you're probably not going to succeed at this check. Okay. Can you do a can you do a uh, knowledge check more than once? Like, if you don't succeed the first time, can you do it again, or is is that it? I don't know. Let's look that up. Sean, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I I have good religion. I just you know I'm trained in it. I just um I, I think I failed it. Yeah, it looks like actually you can't attempt a knowledge check again if you fail the first time. Eh, it looks like you can only attempt additional checks if you succeeded on the first time and you want more information and the difficulty increases. So if no one else can do a religion check, then maybe you're stuck, right? You may not have the ability. Or if you have, don't have any specific knowledge of creatures that of this type, and I... I if you do have specific knowledge of different creature types, you know, let me know, and I'll tell you if you've got one that's relevant. But otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to make a religion check on this creature. So what do you want to try? What else would you like to try to do, Josh? Stab it to death. Okay, that's something you could try to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh, nice. no. Natural 20. Yeah. All right, that is a 31 which is, with that 20, a critical hit. So you get to roll double damage. Double damage. It's been so long since I did damage. How does one even do that? 12 damage, 24 damage when you double that. 24 damage. Ouch. Okay. So remember that this creature has this hide on it that acts like a shield, basically. Right? The hide takes half the damage, so 12 damage minus 5 points. So that means that the hide's going to take seven points of damage. And then the creature takes the other half, right? So the creature takes the other seven. Its hide that it's wearing is starting to look pretty tattered. You think another hit like that, and it's going to fall apart. But the creature itself doesn't look that badly wounded. It doesn't seem like that really bothered it all that much. Lame. You want to attack again, or what else you want to do? Corgo is going to move away because see Rungar is acting funny yeah so Corgo's gonna move away from that business um and he's going to looking at the turn order Rungar is next then Aklep then Zinka then this thing's gonna go right Corgo can't tell what Zinka's gonna do she looks it's looking rough yes Zinka she's is not badly injured so Corgo's going to 
set up an aid for Zanketh to maybe if she she might run away. She might attack. If she attacks, he's going to help her hit. You have reach, don't you? Yes. You could attack from there, I think. I could, but I would be at a minus five. That's true. And the, the damage isn't really... All that great. Okay. Going through. So you're going to set up an aid. So you're going to try to do something to aid Zankath. Okay. So... Yeah, so when he attacks, Corgo's going to like use his athletics to kind of do make him put him in an awkward position to open him up but maybe she just attacks right around the hide she finds the weak point okay so maybe roll a may, roll that athletics check then and we'll s- i will roll it if she does it um so the help happens right at the see. action so it's like setting up i the, see you're readying an it's action like setting up the action so so that's if you're readying an action does she need to use two actions to ready the reaction Yes, but I don't know that that matters for that. I'll look it up. I think that you can just, I think you can just do it now. I think you could just say, I'm aiding Zankath and do your action now, and it will pass on to her in her turn. Okay. I don't think it makes much of a difference, except for- I don't think it makes a difference except either. Except for metagaming, like if they see that I, that I made it worse, then they're like, oh- Okay. I won't do oh, that. Oh, sure. Then, but I I'll... mean, like, you're using the action one way or the other. Like, yeah. so I don't know if it matters rolling now versus rolling that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'd just go ahead and roll yeah. now. Just go ahead and roll the aid check now. And your DC, yep, you did it because we're using the new remastered rules DC, which is only 15. Oh, glorious. Okay, so I got a 17. So you get a plus one. Oh. Zancath, you get a plus one to any skill or attack that you attempt here. The next creature to go is Rungara. Now, Rungara has only one active target at the moment. Grifka is down. The only target within reach is the weird creature. There's no other viable target, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll attacks from Rungara. Or I guess you can roll them, Josh, if you want. Okay. Rungara has to use all his actions to attack. Oh, that just, that seems mean. Okay, all action to attack. First one's a 13. That's not great. Second one's a 15. Last one is a 21. Now, this creature you're attacking is technically off guard because Zankath is on the other side. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which means that 21 is a hit. Nice. It's 10 damage. All right. So, let's see. Half of that goes to the pelt, but the pelt has a hardness of 5, so it doesn't actually oh, damage the pelt. But the brutal. other five points of damage goes through to the creature. Woo. And the creature grumbles and roars in frustration that this animal has attacked it that it was supposed to be helping it. And that is Rungara's turn. Good boy, Rungara. Uh, next is Aklep. Aklep, what do you want to do? I think that Aklep needs to heal Zankath. think that think that Zankath is, you know, on death's door and yep. that he needs to heal. You have two action heal. I was going to say, he has heal. He has, yeah. And if I do it at a two action, I can do it at a range of 30 feet. And I am within 30 feet yep. of Zankath. Um, is it healing 1d8 plus 8? Is that, that's how it does? That's right. Now, you also have the option of a three action heal. Mm-hmm. The issue with that is it would heal everyone, everybody within the range of your emanation. And that would include the monster you're fighting. But that would mean it would also heal Grifka. Grifka. And is Rungara hurt? No. I don't think Rungara is hurt. Is Corgo hurt? Only a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Barely. Like one hit point. I'm one hit point down. Yeah. You would heal everybody, including yourself and Grifka. So the question is, would you want to spend those three actions to heal everybody, including the creature you're fighting? I don't think it's worth it to okay. heal the creature we're fighting. You wouldn't heal the pelt, to be clear. If I knew that this creature was undead, right, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. But you However, don't know that. I failed at a knowledge check, and uh, and this is not a guess. I don't. I have no idea if it's undead or not. Maybe it, it could be. Who could, who knows? But it's eating, so I don't, well, zombies eat. I don't know, guys. It's rough. It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> so so you want to do your two action heal then? Ooh. Okay. And then we gotta apply the healing. To our friend. How much did you roll? I rolled five plus eight, so it's a 13. Okay. And then I have one action left. That's right. What can I do? Is there anything I can do to help Grifka? I don't think so, because stabilize. You have battle medicine? No. Let's see. You could um, try to intimidate this creature. In fact, 
That might be a great use of your action to try to intimidate this creature. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that or I could hit it with my atlatl, but maybe me making room for you guys to hit is probably better than me trying to actually hit with something that's not going to do much damage. Okay, so you make a demoralized check. Okay. Uh, which means you're rolling an intimidation skill check. 22. You know what? That succeeded. Yeah. Nice. Tell me what it is that Aklep did that made this creature a little bit frightened and uncomfortable. Oh, Aklep lost Grifka. Well, Grifka is is um, burning with with some of Aklep's fury, and and now Grifka is his his embers have dulled, and so now Aklep is extra furious. Okay, so the creature happens to glance in your direction and sort of does a double take when it sees Aklep. And something about Aklep's expression is unnerving to it, and it thinks maybe it might have made a mistake here. Grifka is unconscious, and I think that actually means we need to roll a flat check, DC 11 flat check, for poor Grifka. Do you know how that works? No. When you have death and dying, so let me get to the rules on this. He's at exactly zero. Yeah. Not negative anything. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Okay. When you're unconscious, right now you're dying one. And that means you must attempt a recovery check at the start of your turn each round to determine whether you get better or worse, right? So right now, that means you need to roll a d20. And if you roll 11 or higher, then Griffith stabilizes, okay? Okay. Oh, this is... Guys, don't have me roll things, okay? This is horrible. (laughs) I'm sorry. This is the game. Roll a d20. Or I'll roll it if you don't want to. (laughs) Yeah, why do we do this? I did. Look at it. Go ahead. Tell us what you rolled. Yeah. (laughs) It was a four. Okay. So that means that he passes to dying two. What does dying two mean? Like, what does he need to be? uh... When a character reaches dying four, they die. Unless you have a feat that lets you go a little bit further. Okay. Right. And it also means that the difficulty is now a bit higher. Now they need to roll a 12 or higher on d20 to stabilize. Okay. Right? Or if someone can heal them. Yeah. Right? That would also stabilize them. Vesti, if you could do like a knowledge check and figure out if this is an undead creature, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> so that is Zancath's turn now. Zancath, you have a plus one. Yes. Thanks to Corgo. What do you want to do? I'm going to stab it. Okay. You also have the creature off guard against you. Uh-huh. Uh, for multiple reasons. So yay for that. Yep. It's a... 23 to hit? That is a hit. Okay. You're going to get some sneak attack damage. I am. Uh, That's nine damage. Oh, okay. Nine damage total. All right, so that means the creature... Nothing. It's going to take four. Pelt's fine. That's unfortunate. Yep, it didn't affect the pelt. It wasn't enough to affect the pelt, but you did hurt the creature. And that's your first action. Yep. I am then going to stride and hope that this creature doesn't actually have attacks of opportunity. 5, 10, 15, 20. It does not. Excellent. Now that I'm, I've am i moved around behind Prangara, mm-hmm. so I am adjacent to Grifka now, and I am going to use Treat Wounds ah. to my battle medicine to... Heal, so that's a medicine check. Mm hmm. You've been taking lessons from Jonesy. It's a 27. <laughs> a wow. 27? What's the DC for I think it's 15. battle medicine? I think it's 15. I think that means that's a critical success. DC is usually 15, though the GM yeah. might. Re- uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that's a critical success. Now, I don't know how you bandage a fire elemental. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you get a lighter out and. <laughs> Burn it a little bit. You, you get one of your tinder twigs and try to light it back up again. And so that's, yeah, that's a success. You need to roll double the normal healing. I don't, I'm trying, I've, I've done this once before. I'm trying to remember what the normal healing is. Where does it say? Why are you making this complicated? Hmm. I don't, I'm not seeing anything with the amount. I think it's a D8, but I don't know why I think that. Treat wounds. Are you trained or an expert? Uh, I'm trained in medicine. So that is 4d8 healing. Cool. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. My spell is not that near that good. This is a critical success. Oh, okay. She exceeded the DC by more than 10. It was a heck of a lighter. Uh, 17, 17 hit points back. 
to Grifka. All right, so Grifka recovers and is now no longer dying and in fact is not even unconscious, although they are prone. They are prone and they do have the wounded condition two now. It's two, right? Or is it one? That's right, wounded two, because that's the death level that they went to, the dying level they went to. Grifka is back, well, conscious. (laughs) That means we are now done with Zankath's turn. The only bad thing about that action is both you and Grifka are next to Hrungara. Isn't Hrungara? Hrungara's not confused anymore. Yeah. Last oh, time. Oh, I guess at the start of the turn. Yeah, you're right. They won't be. Unfortunately, that means it is the creature's turn. Yeah. I feel bad leaving the uh, animal companions to die, but yeah, <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I know. So he's demoralized. What does that give him? Oh, that's right. I need to... But demoralized. It's frightened one, I think. So, yes. It's like it's like minus one to all your Checks stuff. Checks and yeah. DCs. That's right. I'm going to first attack Rungara because Rungara attacked it and it's just not working. The confusion is not working. So let's do an attack here. I have a 27. Does that hit Rungara? That does. Stop it. Stop it with these rolls. That's 22 points of damage to Rungara. Oh my God. That was actually a pretty good roll then. Yeah, I, I rolled pretty darn well. Frustrated that this fire elemental is back up again. I'm going to take an attack on that. Right. With a, of course, multiple attack penalty. See how that goes. Does an 18 hit Grifka? I don't know. How do I determine that? Uh, Grifka's armor class is 17, partly because Grifka's prone. So that is a hit. But he should have on... a negative one. Boo. There is mm-hmm. a, a minus one penalty in there from Frightened. Ah. <laughs> so there's a total minus five penalty. How is this guy rolling so well? This guy being Mike, right? <laughs> well, it's just Foundry. Foundry loves DMs and hates players, I've decided, just this moment. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> they don't deserve that, that D&D contract. <laughs> yeah, so I rolled a seven. What were they thinking? A seven plus a bunch of bonuses. So here we go. Here's the damage to Grifka. Let's see how big it is. Fifteen. Grifka is still up. Man, it does yeah. almost all of my hard work. Yep, that's true. But Grifka is still up. And now, with my last action, I'm going to try. Can I do this more than once? No. Nah. I don't see why I couldn't do this more than once. The weird creature, again, turns around and focuses on Rungara and gives it a, a, a weird look. And Rungara sort of sways for a moment. Make a will save for Hrungara. I believe in you, Josh. Never mind. Hrungara got a 14. This feels important. It is important. Yes. So I will use a... Because he rolled a three on the die, which is very bad. bad. Yes. Yeah, do the thing. I will use a hero point yeah. to see if we can stop Hrungara well, from this happening. Whoa. Got a 30, 30 nice. this time. Nice. Wow. Wow. Okay. Hrungara doesn't just resist. Hrungara is now immune to this for 24 hours. Oh, good. Jeez. Yeah. So, Rungara resists this confusion effect and is not affected. That is the end of the weird creature's turn. Corgo, it is your turn. Awesome. Rungara's back to normal. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Rungara snaps out of it, looks back at Corgo like he's realizing what the heck's going on. Corgo nods to Rungara and says, it's go time, buddy. And he charges over. He goes into a rage because he's charging over like a cat. He's going nuts. I forgot how to rage. How do I rage? <laughs> Not knowing how to rage makes me rage. <laughs> okay, Corgo goes, Corgo goes nuts. He drops the spear and his hands turn into claws as much as that's possible. Corgo attacks and he's just going to bite this thing because he's going insane. Uh, 12. Not very good. But now that Krongara is a mature animal companion, Krongara also takes an action without Korgo having to use a command animal. Krongara, where a combo attack and Krongara rolls a 28. Wow. That is a hit. Not a critical hit, but a hit. Bummer. Krongara rolled 15 damage. Wow. Okay. 15 damage. All right. So that's Seven points of damage to the hide and seven points of damage to the creature. That means the hide takes two points of damage. Ugh. So close. Yep, getting close. Yep. And then the creature also takes uh, seven points of damage. In D&D 4E parlance, the creature is now bloodied. 
What? What does it mean? Yeah. <laughs> if nobody played 4E, I guess you don't know. But <laughs> so Corgo runs in and ju- like kind of jumps on him to attack him, and the, the th- awful thing like shrugs him off, and then Frungar goes in and actually gets a good bite in. Okay. So. And that was your. Those are your three actions. That is all three actions. Okay. Uh, next is Aklep. Aklep, your crew is back up, and Corgo has just gone bonkers. He is swinging wildly, clawing and biting at this disgusting creature, and Hurangara is doing the same thing. What do you want to do? I've got spells. You do? They have not thus far been successful. <laughs> 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 so that's that's been fun. Do you have any more healing? I, I don't know because it's all, it's like crossed out on my thing right now. <laughs> I think that means, the, so the druids I think have prepared spells. I think you can only do it like once. Yeah, I think you if you prepare the spell once, you can cast it once. I think my other spells were cantrips, so they didn't get crossed out. Yeah, those you can do over and over again, but I think the leveled spells. Yeah, I think you've got to have it prepared, whatever it is you want to do. You prepare your spells for the day. Each prepared spell is expended after a single casting, so if you want to cast a particular spell on them more than once, you need to prepare that spell multiple times. Yeah, so you would have to prepare that spell more than one time to have access to it more than once. Um, okay. You, did you already cast Protector Tree? I can't remember if you've cast that yet. I have not cast Protector Tree yet. That That's a pretty cool spell. You could try to stick that in here to protect your allies. What does it do? It's a tree that protects Josh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? literally, yes. But the thing is, it only has 10 hit points. That's true. So. But, but that would soak up a hit. That would soak up most of a hit from this creature. Right? Ten, 10 points were not taken. Right. Animal form, I don't think, gets you very much right now. Yeah, I mean, I could be a I could be a bear. Would that be helpful? I guess it might be helpful. Maybe a bear will hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I do spend one action, right, to make my uh, guy attack? If you want to give your animal companion two attacks, yes, you spend an action. Okay, I want him to be a hero. Okay. So I would like to spend an action to give him two attacks. Awesome. All right, so you do that. So Grifka now back uh, on its feet. I guess it has to take an action to stand up. Okay. So that's it has two actions. So one action, it stands up, and it has one action left. So he'll strike with his tendril. Okay. It's a 20. Because of the creature's current conditions, oh. on its turn, that frightened ticks down by one, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'm afraid so. It does. So... That is a miss. Do you want to hero point that? Is it worth hero pointing that? I don't know. I mean, that's an 11, and you almost hit. So likelihood of you hitting with a hero point is good, but also what kind of damage, like, is it enough damage to warrant it? And is there something you could do that would give you a better chance to hit? So, for example, if you attacked with Produce Flame... Uh, what's your bonus to hit with that? Is it better than Grifka's? Looks like your spell attack bonus is... What is it, 10? Oh, yeah, plus 10. If you attack with a spell, you'll have a slightly larger bonus to hit than Grifka would. So you could save that hero point for you in case you miss. Yeah, I think I'll save it for me. Okay, unless you want to do something else, of course, with your two actions remaining. So I gave him... Uh, a, a second action, so he used it to attack after standing, but right. he missed. That's right. Now I have two actions. So I could cast Protector Tree. You could? That would protect Grifka if he were to get hit again, or, right. you know, or, or someone. So I think that is what I will do. I don't know where to put the... If I put the Protector Tree kind of like right where Corgo is, I think that's kind of protecting everybody, right? Yeah, how do I let's see? Can I, if you cast that, is there something I can drag onto the map here? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna cast it. Oh, you cast it for me. Yeah, I cast it just to see if there was something I could, if I could, if there was a way to get it to do something. It doesn't look like there is. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little bastion token. <laughs> All right, so there's a little bastion token. That's a protector tree. All right. <laughs> so cute. It's such a sweet looking tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, this medium tree grows here, and uh, it has an AC of 10 and 10 hit points. Awesome. So whenever someone adjacent to the tree is hit, which would be Hungara, 
or Grifka or or Corgo. Or Corgo. Yeah. It's everyone but Saint Kath and Aklub. Yeah, the tree gets in the way and takes ten points of damage. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty dang cool. Zankath, it is your turn. Okay, to start with, uh, Zankath is uh, going to faint. She's going to make it look like she's moving between Grifka and Hurangara to attack, but then go the other way. Let's see if that works. Nope, that doesn't work. That's an 11. You can hero point it. Yeah, I will. I might as well. Okay. I might regret this later. Let's see. <laughs> that's a 23. And that's against Will DC, right? It just says deception trained, so I don't know. It's a feint, right? My cheat sheet is not being helpful in this instant. <laughs> That's all right. I'll look it up. Oh, against the perception DC, and you rolled a 23. I'm going to call that a success. Cool. Yay. Thank you, I think. So just in case there, there's stuff that happens if the creature attacks me, but I don't know that that's going to be a problem. Ooh, I might have. I may have erred, but we're already here. Uh, and then I'm going to step. Uh, so I'm beside Rangara, and I'm going to attack. Okay. Creature is off guard to you now because of the faint. Uh-huh. 23 to hit. That is a hit. Yes. Come on, dice. Be nice to me just this once. 10 damage. 10 damage. All right, so the creature takes five, and the pelt is unharmed. Yep. Okay. Now, where I might have erred is I used all my actions, <laughs> so I'm still beside it. <laughs> I'm still adjacent. That's true. So if it attacks me, it will have some penalties. All right. Now the creature gets to go. And now it is surrounded. It's got this weird tree that just appeared next to it. And it's got this fiery creature that's swinging at it. It's got a large man clawing at it and a cat doing the same thing. And this little woman stabbing at it. It's going to try to reduce the list of uh, of enemies nearby here. Let's start with um, Let's start with the weird fire creature. Let's see if we can get rid of that one. So starting with the fire elemental, it's going to make a jaw strike. 25 is a hit. 18 points of damage. And that means the fire elemental is unconscious again. Well, doesn't doesn't uh, 10 oh, points go to the tree? Right, 10 points goes to the tree. Yeah. yeah. So that means the fire elemental only takes 8 points of damage, which puts it at 9, Woo. right? Yeah. All right. But the tree is... But the tree is gone. Finito. Thank you, friend tree, for your assistance. <laughs> All right. So the creature slashes at little Grifka. I guess not little, medium-sized Grifka. And the tree interposes itself and absorbs some of the damage, but is torn apart, and the creature roars in frustration. He and got then, some bark in his mouth. And then <laughs> turns to Rungara and figures, well, maybe I can get rid of the cat. Uh, 19 to hit. Miss. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. All right, 19 is a miss. All right, so uh, with my last action, um, I don't have any cool abilities left. All right, last action. I'm going to just try to hit Zancath. Uh, minus two because I have overextending faint. Oh, okay, so we'll take two away from this roll that I'm about to do, okay? That's cool. 20. Hey, guess what? That misses miss. by one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Ooh. So in frustration, the creature Ooh. slashes at Zankath, who jumps out of the way. She has successfully fainted. She's fooled the creature into thinking she would be where she was not, and it misses. And that is the end of the creature's turn. Corgo, can you do something to it? <laughs> I'm so glad know. he knows what we feel now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Corgo and Prongar are going to tag team this thing. It looks so weird. With a man pretending to be a saber-toothed tiger, <laughs> an actual saber-toothed tiger, and fighting another man stuffed inside of a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> so, Corgo's going to just start just going crazy. So, one attack is 17, and another is a natural yeah. 20. Oh. Okay. So, the 17 is a miss. You've already used a hero point. You can't re-roll that one. But the 25, the natural 20, that is a hit. So you need to roll your double damage. 24. 24. Right. Oh, okay. So that destroys yes. the pelt. Yes. Thank goodness. The pelt is destroyed, and that's 12 points of damage to the creature, which then, again, roars in frustration and pain. And that's 
Corgo's actions. Are you going to use an action to command Herangara? He doesn't need to because he's so cool. They're so in tune now because they've been adventuring so hard. But you could, you could give Herangara two attacks. Here's the other problem. Oh. So in order to command an animal, uh-huh. you have to... You have a sound mental state. Oh, right. You can't do that while Corgo you're raging. Corgo is not. And it takes... He, Corgo does have an ability that allows him to calm down for a second. Mm-hmm. But that takes an action to uh, do that. okay. So Corgo's not going to do that. Yeah. Instead, Corgo's going to, as he's wrestling this thing, he's going to try to... He's grabbing the thing by the antlers. He's going to try to lift it up to, like, expose its neck. Is, it, is its head sticking out of the thing? That's what I'm imagining. The pelt has just fallen around it. It's, it's just exposed Oh, now. it's on the floor. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So Corgo's got this, it's like on its back and it's, got, and it's grabbing the its horns. It's trying to expose its neck to help Prangara, um, you know, do the saber tooth tiger move that we all know it wants to do. So he rolls a 33. Yeah. So Prangara gets a plus two to his attack. It's a critical success on this aid attempt. And Rungara gets a plus two to the attack. And Rungara goes for it. He knows the deal. Don't mess with the Smilodons. And Rungara rolls a 22. And that is a hit. That is nine points of damage. Okay, and all of that goes through because the creature no longer has this armor protection. That is your turn. The creature is now in bad shape. It has been badly wounded. It is bleeding from several injuries. And it's extra gross. It doesn't have any skin. Yeah. <laughs> that is Aklep's turn. Aklep, this creature is in bad shape. Okay. My Fire Elmolta has something. He, he he provides a support benefit to fire damage, and I use an action to do that. That's right. Hold on. Until the start of my next turn, my strikes that damage a creature and your Fire Elmolta's reach also deal 1d6 persistent fire damage. But persistent fire damage would also just happen immediately, too. Right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing, though. You need to spend an action to tell your fire elemental to do that, right? Because on its turn, all it can choose to do is attack or move. Oh. It can't choose to do that on its own. If you leave it on its own, it can only choose to attack or move. If you want it to do something else, you've got to command it. Okay. Which is fine. You can command it. You can command it, give it two actions. command it to give it two actions. Well, I feel like giving it one... A command that gives it an action to buff my action and then giving it like one hit is not better than giving it two hits, right? That would mean that your hit is more effective though. If I hit. If you hit. Which has been a problem. Mm -hmm. It's less likely to hit on its second attack than you are to hit on your first. So I think it's better to buff your attack with its other action. Yeah, buffing is a really smart idea. This game really relies on you and enemies buffing and debuffing. Okay, so I, I will use one action to get my fire elemental support benefit. All right. So that means now when you hit a creature, it will start taking persistent fire damage. So what does that look like? What's it do? You know, he just, he like flares up. Yeah. You know, he's ready. <laughs> Flame on. <laughs> yeah. He flares up and then you fire your fire through him. Yeah. And it like makes it bigger and better. Yeah, so I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Okay. And and he will add flame to my flame <laughs> given that it hits. Alright, so do you want to roll, I guess you want to roll his attack first, though. Rifka's attack first, since it's... Oh, It doesn't really matter, the order that you go in. Yeah, let's do it. I think I'm going to need to hero point that. Yeah, that's You've got not one hero it. point if you want to use it. You didn't use it already? No. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you've got one hero point. Go ahead and use it if you want. Yeah, I think I think we're going to have to. You've got a pretty big bonus there. Yeah. And yet. And yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Is that so a natural 20? That that's is a, a natural 20. <laughs> Good use of a hero point there. Yeah, so you need to roll the damage for that spell. And then we'll double it. So 20? 20 points of damage. And if you read the spell description, it says, on a critical success, the target takes double damage and 2d4 persistent fire damage. And that's in addition to the 1d6 persistent fire damage from your elemental. So I'm rolling 2d4 and 1d6? That's right. Is that now, does it take on her turn or does it take on the creature's turn, the persistent fire damage? Uh, You guys remember? I would think on the monster's turn. Let's double check that. Instead of taking persistent damage immediately, you take it at the end of your turns as long as you have the condition, rolling any damage dice anew each time. Alright, so at the end of this creature's turn, it's going to take that damage. Does that make sense? 
Cool. Yes. Okay. So you'll roll that persistent damage when we get to the end of that creature's turn. You're going to roll okay. 1d6 and 2d4. Okay. I did already roll it. Okay. No, well, no. then we'll, get, we'll we just can keep that. roll it again later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll roll it again. <laughs> yeah, we're not supposed to roll it now anyway, so we'll... We'll roll it again. I feel like could have better. So my fiery elemental still has an action, though. That's right. So you can attack so with it. So he's going to attack with his uh, tendril. Unfortunately, <laughs> what did you he's get? He's just not shining. Yeah. <laughs> he got an 11. He's having a rough day. We're back to our rolls. <laughs> yeah. But that natural 20 was clutch. Yeah. Uh, you did how much damage? You did 20 points of damage to it? Yeah. The creature is now looking horribly wounded. It is staggering around. It has almost nothing left in it. And that means it is now Zankath's turn. Zankath. Yeah. This creature is in front of you. It is staggering around. It looks desperate. It is looking around. It looks like it's going to try to flee, maybe. What do you want to do? There's not a limit to the number of feints that I can do, right? Nope. Excellent. Faint again. Oh, that's a 15. That one's not going to do it. That doesn't do it. Okay, uh, then I'm just going to stab it. Hope that normal damage does it. It is not off guard to you. Uh, 28 to hit. That is a hit. It is off guard to her. Is oh, it? it is? Because um, Corgo hit it, and Prungar is threatening it, so it is off guard to everyone. Oh, wow. Okay, okay cool. I didn't need to do that faint then, but okay. A 16 <laughs> damage. Sorry. 16 damage is enough. Next. It had one hit point left. Oh. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once it lost the ability to get that protection from the pelt, it was just taking all that damage really directly, and it was in bad shape. I, I feel like the pelt is like a really good protector tree, right? and I want it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You've got to brutally kill this thing. <laughs> Zancat, how would you describe this kill? Uh, just taking the top right off. Take it the top. All right, a little off the top, and the creature collapses to the <laughs> ground. Off the top. <laughs> and this chamber becomes quiet, except for the mewling of young Smilodons on that shelf, that um, uh, platform to your west there. <sighs> Corgo's holding the head that Zankath just <laughs> took a little off the top of. <laughs> How can I help uh, my wounded Grifka? Uh, let's see. Well, you can't treat wounds on it for another hour, I think, right? I know battle medicine has... The target is temporarily immune to treat wound actions for one hour. Yeah. So you can't treat it again with treat wounds for another hour. You can uh, basically hope you don't get in any more trouble here for a little while. You could treat wounds on someone else if someone else is wounded. Rungar is wounded... Zankath is wounded. I'm also immune to treat wounds for an hour. Because uh, I did battle medicine on myself. That's right. I forgot. Hrungara could use some treatment. Hrungara is sort of look, looking around and whimpering. Corgo kneels down next to Hrungara and kind of gets gives him a pat. And it's like, you've gotten so strong. You're stronger than me now, I think. And Hrungara looks, looks over at the cubs. And I think that... I think that male saber, saber two tigers might actually want to kill cubs. Ooh. So her, so Hrungar, so Corgo's like, Hrungar, no. <laughs> Hrungar no. is actually <laughs> occupied at the moment, I think, being at half hit points or less. But yeah, that is a concern. That is a common thing with big cats, is male cats kill offspring of other male cats. Hrungar, n- no. That's weird. <laughs> okay, so should I treat runes on Hung- Hungara or... Corgo. I don't know that Corgo's Corgo fine. doesn't really need it. He's barely injured. Okay. Uh, well, Aklep will uh, cautiously approach Rungara. Rungara is covered in blood. Its own. That thing's. Sand calf. It's, <laughs> so it's 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 furs all matted down. Yeah. And uh, he will he will attempt to treat wounds on him. All right. Roll a medicine check. Do it. All right. Oof. We could be better at this. <laughs> Boundary, you just got to get used to it. I, I meant at medicine. <laughs> oh, well, what did you get? Uh, 19. Yeah. So that's a success. And that's 2d8 hit points back. All right. Do you want to roll that for him? Would you like me to? Yeah, 10. All right. You can still hear the little Smilodons crying on that platform up there. Oh, we're going. We, we just, you know. Backlap, how do you know how to fix a Smilodon? That's amazing. 
easier than healing Grifka. And Naklip kind of nods at Zankath. Oh, isn't that the truth? Uh, I was afraid I was going to get burnt while I was taking care of Grifka, but it all worked out. We appreciate you. Of course, it's the uh, same to you. I would not be standing here were it not for you. Yeah, we, d- we did a really good job. Great job, everybody. That was impressive. And I don't know what that is, but I'm glad it's nope, dead. If it's terrible, I'm glad it's dead. Agreed. What do you want to do now? Get to them kittens. All right, so <laughs> we're going to climb up on the ledge. Get to them kittens! With the kittens. It is a DC 15 athletics check. I mean, couldn't we just... Oh, no, it's a DC 15 regardless, even if we went around the other way to the... Yeah, yeah. it's still DC 15. Okay, I'm going to go for it. That's a 14. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Zancath. She sort of jumps. Real tired. Uh, Real hard. Can't quite get up the wall. Just can't even get started. Yeah, she's pretty badly hurt. Athletics, eh? Yep. Uh, it, <laughs> I could try, but maybe it's a Corgo thing. Uh, go on, Aklep. You got this. Do you want me to help you? I like helping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that's not going to do it. It's an 11. <laughs> Maybe we could survive on my way up there. <laughs> <laughs> the stones are coated in blood, your blood and the monster's blood, and you just can't quite get up this this uh, shelf. So slippery. Can I flip really creatively and acrobatics up there? No. Bummer. Okay. It's up to you, Corgo. Corgo, dear, why don't you go up there? We'll stay down here with Trongara. Okay. Corgo's looking at the blood all over his hands. Uh, he, he pats on Aklep. Uh, sorry, I need my hands dry. And then he tries to run up there. Oh. He rolls a natural one. <laughs> Corgo runs straight into the wall. I oh. can't do this. Uh, well, I guess we're going to have to leave the Smilodon kittens there. No. No. No, we have to have some rope or something uh, to help us. What a brutal ending to this game. Repeated attempts? Can we? Can we? I, I guess you could. You could try again. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna try a. I mean, no. Corgo needs to try again. Corgo needs to try again. But <laughs> Corgo is standing there, a little stunned. I'm gonna try again. Ran into the wall. I'm gonna help you, cause I'm in pain. Go for it, Zangs. Jump off my back. Is that plus two? So you get a plus two, Zankath. He rolled a total of 28. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's a... Si- oh, with all of my minuses? Uh, that's a natural one. I, I think Corgo just kind of flips me into the air and I fall on my back. <laughs> this is like just a like comedy of errors. Oh, no, Zangs! Eclip, catch her! At this point, hearing all the noise, the... Uh, kittens there are uh, three of them walk over to the ledge and see you repeatedly trying to <laughs> climb up and fall down and now they're just watching you can i try to coax the kittens down you could try a nature check yeah could I? yeah aklep is going to try to coax the kittens down um you know like you know making like pss, 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 you know <laughs> yeah the universal yeah. Summoning sound. i wrote a 15 Unfortunately, a 15 is not enough. They look a little frightened, and they back away from the ledge. Uh, just to let you know, I have a plus 12 to nature, so I actually rolled a 3 to get to my 15. Aglip, you're scaring them. What are you... You did the sound all wrong. Uh, uh Rangara, listen. I need you to go up there, but I need you to also not eat the kittens. Can you do that? Uh, Ragara returns to bathing, occasionally looking over there, but mostly bathing. I don't know if that's a yes or a no. <laughs> Hungara, you're going to be bathing for days. You're covered in blood. All right, Hungara, go up there. You want Hungara to go up there? Do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess Hungara could make an athletics check. Hungara, go do it. Hey. 27. Whoa. Okay, so Hungara leaps up there. And the kittens all mule and they uh, withdraw to the back of the shelf and Hurungara looks at you. Get them and bring them back safely, you monster. <laughs> Is that a command that Hurungara knows? <laughs> yeah, we definitely t- we definitely did <laughs> this. And, and I should have went up school. there on Hurungara. We missed an opportunity. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we can do that now. You know, it's funny that after defeating this incredibly difficult monster, the real challenge is... Getting on a ledge. Right? Climbing rocks. 
I mean, I'm glad these rolls didn't happen during the fight, but still. Business. <laughs> Two natural ones. A three. Uh, okay, so Hrungara just sits and looks at you. Oh my gosh, you forgot all your training. Resumes bathing again. <laughs> cool, go see if Hrungara will come down here and get me. Uh, Hrungara, come on. Back down here. Zanka's gonna go for a ride. <laughs> okay, uh, make an athletics check. Okay. Don't spill, Hrungara. That would be embarrassing. 19. Yep, Hrungara easily hops down. Okay, I'm gonna hop on. Okay. Rungara seems a little weirded out by this and looks at Corgo. <laughs> it's cool, buddy. It's this. This is awesome, actually. This is what. Oof, this is what I've dreamed of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what'd you roll there, Josh? Uh, natural one. All right, so Rungara shakes and Zenkat falls off. Yep. <laughs> Maybe uh, the other cliff. I think that one was easier. Uh, uh, maybe. Let's give it a try. <laughs> That's all I've got. I'd What's the other? Cl- what other cliff are you talking about? The one uh, back? Ar- you mean go all the way around? Yeah, there's that weird rock formation that looks like a curtain. I think it's around the other side of that. Yeah, yeah. The the original one we saw before we got to where the crazy monster was. Back here. Oh well, that doesn't lead to this shelf. Oh, though. okay. Oh well, thank whoops. you for that information. We'll just keep trying. Are we not getting? Are we not getting injured? I mean, no, you're not getting injured because it's not high enough. Uh, basically, you're just unable to get started. So we're we're unable to get off a, a tiny right. cliff. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying it again. Go. Fourteen. Still fails. Yeah. It's DC fifteen. Okay. Oh God, I'm gonna try on the other side of the soapstone wall. Okay. Yeah. Corgo attacks the wall with his face. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Rolls a sixteen. Oh wait. All right, so you successfully attack the wall. Well done. <laughs> that was actually a leg strike okay. to climb it again. So Corgo, after. Much trial and error, you manage finally to pull your weary body up onto the shelf where there are these three Slippery. Smilodons cowering in the corner away from you. I'm going to go ahead and move your little figure up there. Cargo's like oh, exhausted. Oh, just so exhausted. cute they are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so cute. So cute. All right. So do you want to try to calm them down? Yeah. All right, so you need to make a nature check. Cargo already looks so tired and weary, and he's good with cats. He rolls a 28. He doesn't look them directly in the eye, meanders up to them slowly, and tries to see if they'll let him pick one up. In fact, yes, you are successful. So you are able to calm them down, and they even allow you to pick them up. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, you guys. (laughs) I'm going to die for cuteness. Cargo appears back standing over the ledge holding three little kittens. Aklep tries to hide his scary face <laughs> so he doesn't scare the kittens again. Yep, they squirm around like cats do when you try to carry them. But Corgo, I hate to say it, you got to climb back down. you got to get back down the... Mm-hmm. But it's harder now. My hands are full. Can you <laughs> hand the kittens off? You could hand the kittens down. Okay, hold on. I... I Corgo grab, picks him up by the scruff and leans over the ledge and hands him down to Aklop, okay. standing right there. Then we'll hand one wave at a time. you climbing down. You're able to climb down. Oh, no. Not at this point, buddy. Oh, no. You're going to roll? All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, 25. Okay. All right. He wow. gently climbs down the wall. You have solved the... <laughs> you have solved my baby Smilodon puzzle. <laughs> uh-huh. That was a really hard puzzle, uh-huh. Mike. <laughs> Yep, I worked real hard on designing that. <laughs> They'll never think of a DC-15 athletics check. <laughs> that was a little embarrassing. Nobody hears about this part. <laughs> we we killed that awful creature and then s- s- climbed up that cliff no problem. Just, can I can I ask a metagaming question? Sure. Was that creature undead? No. Oh, okay, good. good. <laughs> Glad I didn't heal it. Yep. Yeah, that would have sucked. Okay, I don't want to have anything to do with this cave anymore for the rest of the day. Let's get out of here. (laughs) You all seem pretty beat up. Resources expended. You're tired. So it's probably time to return to camp for a rest. And I know that there is a little girl at that camp who would be so excited to see three Smilodon kittens. Cubs, I guess. She can't have them. (laughs) They're ours. Okay, well, I'm not sure if Emic will stand for that, but <laughs> you can try. What little girl? Oh, Aklop's never met her. 
Um, I think you'll get along. Um, are you a good listener, Aklep? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I would think you would be because it's like very one way with you, you know what I mean? You don't like say a lot, so that must mean you're a good listener. Aklep just kind of lifts an eyebrow. <laughs> uh, see? Great job. Okay, let's get out of here. All right, so you return to camp? Yes. Yes. You return to camp as the sun is setting, and it's beautiful outside. The weather is, is warm and comfortable, and the uh, everyone at the camp is excited to see what you're bringing back with you, although you all look terrible. You, I mean, not <laughs> I guess not Aklep, and Corgo looks okay, just a few scratches, but everyone else looks badly injured. Uh-huh. But you bring these three Smilodon cubs back to camp, and of course, the first person to run up to you is Imic. And Imic, for the sake of Aklep, is a, a girl, a little girl, maybe nine or ten years old. And she is just delighted to see these three cubs. And she says, oh, oh, those are Smilodon cubs. I've never held one before, but I know a lot about them. Shall I tell you everything I know? <laughs> Your face is different. <laughs> I haven't talked to you before. That's okay. I'll do the talking. You don't have to talk. <laughs> Your face is different, but that's okay. Different is good. Uh, These Smilodons are different from other animals I've taken care of, and that's good. Imic. Different is okay. Imic, dear. Uh, why, why don't you take... Hi, Zancat. Hello. You look like you're hurt real I'm bad. Ver- are you okay? I'm very hurt. Thank you for asking. Why don't you Maybe take... Maybe you should go see Nacta. She has all the healing stuff, but you already knew that. I, I do, and I shall do that. Why don't you take the cubs and get them settled in? You want me to take the cubs? Is that all right, Corgo? Oh, well, don't look at me. They're not mine. Yes, that's fine. Thank you, dear. I think this guy over here should go with me. I'll tell him all about the cubs. Uh, I need him to go with me uh, to uh, get my healing done. Why? Uh, Because he's a healer as well and needs the practice. Why? Because practice makes perfect. Why? Because it's good to practice so that you can get better at things. Why? (laughs) (sighs) Because being better at things will make you more helpful. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and you all report to Nacta for some healing and some rest. And next time, we'll see what you find next in this terrible, terrible cave. This cave this sucks. sucks. <laughs> maybe this cave maybe sucks. that's the worst part of it. Maybe. Maybe. What? There was the, a lot of lead up into that one. The one right? room? <laughs> that was pretty early on in the I cave. I know, but. I'm not going go back in the cave. We'll just charge through with a bunch of mammoths. We'll so like, what else could stop we'll that? <laughs> Maybe it's just a short cave. Oh, boy. Are you in for some fun? <laughs> oh, no. Don't. No. Take that. You take that back right now. We'll see everybody no in two weeks. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The House of Bob, or by chatting with us on Discord. And most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash the house of Bob. This show is possible due to all of our patrons who get one shots, commentary, and other cool stuff. Art for this campaign is by Sean Makes, and art for social media and audio production and music are all by Mike. (laughs) Thanks again for listening and roll on. So the little dice next to zero, like next to the little dying thing is like grayed out. Like I can't roll it. Does that mean he doesn't need it because he's at a flat zero? That's you specifically. I don't know that that includes Grifka. Yeah, you can just click on the D20 symbol down at the bottom. At the bottom right. I'm on Grifka's... uh, Oh, oh, don't worry about that. Sheet. Don't worry about that. Just go to the lower right-hand corner where there's a bunch of dice and just click on the D20. I'm I'm trying to munchkin my way out of having to roll. I think he's fine if he's at completely (laughs) zero. I'm sorry. And it's grayed out. How could it possibly work? Okay. Oh, this is... Guys, don't have me roll things, okay? This is horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the game. Bad news, Ashley. Sorry. Apparently, uh-huh. uh, in the handbook, it says, if you're reduced to zero health, you gain the dying condition.
Right. So not Uncool. negative. Sorry about that. It was a good effort. Yeah. And what time? What time are we at now? We're at only twenty five minutes. Okay, plenty of time to kill you yet. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying. I'm just glad I hit this time. It's it was great. It's painful. That first, just over and over again. I know. We got a lot of natural twenties, and then we got a lot of natural ones climbing a wall. <laughs> if I had to pick which way that would go, that's where I would want it reversed. But. <laughs>